Uh, I'm really appreciative for the turnout. I'm glad everybody's here to be able to, to meet one another, meet me, and also to meet our new city manager. But to start us off, uh, I, want, I would like to introduce at least one of the elected officials that, that is here, Representative Barbara Bergen Hawkins, if she could stand, give her a big applause. Representative Urban Hawkins has been a great leader in this community for many years. Uh, she's doing a great job at the state level. Uh, we have committed to work together along with Commissioner Tommy Coward to make sure that, that uh, these offices and these positions all work together for the good of the entire uh, area. So I've committed to continue doing that. I'm hoping that the next District 2 Council member will also continue to do that. But it's important for leadership purposes and also for uh, achievement purposes to make sure that, that at least those three uh, representatives for this area work together. So I continue to look for Representative Gerber Hawkins, look forward to continue working with you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what I would also like to do is at this time introduce the District 2 candidates that have already filed. And we're going to just have them come up. If they're here and just, just wave at you, uh, you'll have an opportunity to get to know, know them better over the next four or five months. But the deadline for District 2 candidacy closes on the 15th. And as many of you all know, I'm, I'm here for just the interim, so I won't be running for that position. Uh, but I did want to make sure that I introduce at least the candidates who have filed so far to you. So if they can come forward as I, uh, as I call their names, Denise Gutierrez Homer. Jalen Denise Sullivan, yeah, come on up. Walter Aaron Pearl Perry. Richard Anthony Ramey. Keith Angelo Tony. And we have Joseph Allen Powell. Okay. I may not have to be on it, but I Well, come on up. Give us your name. Your name is? Ruben Arciega. Arciega. Ruben Arciega. So these are your current candidates for District 2. Again, there may be more, uh, but I want you all to see who they are, and after the meeting, be sure to ask them questions, get to know them, and their vision for the district. So, uh, we look forward to a good and fair and open uh, opportunity to, to meet with these individuals over the next four or five months. All right? Thank you all. What I'd also like to do is to have my staff come up. Uh, these are individuals that you all have worked with for many years, uh, that, that are the face of my office and the face of District 2 in many ways. They work closely with, uh, with the city staff. So, Jarvis, come on up. Come on up. Sidel he works on zoning and land use. Susie Romero is our Director of Communications. Jeanette Brown, Constituent Services and Senior Services. but he's worked previously on Council Orlando Ramirez, Director of Precision Services. Maribel Garcia, Constituent Services. Ryan Garza, Director of Special Projects. Our new District 2 intern, Angie Ariana. strategy when I did in District 8, uh, when I came on board, Bonnie Connor was a previous council member, and she had one of the best staffs that was known at City Hall and, and throughout the city. And so my strategy was to keep that same consistency of staff members on board when I came on the, on the District 8. Uh, District 2 has, has also has the same reputation. So what, 
reporting team to make sure that we keep that consistency and keep all of these individuals on board. So I'm happy to be working with every one of them. And as you all interface with my office in the city, uh, these are the people that you'll be dealing with. So thank you all for working with me, and thank you all for working with them. Appreciate it. And just a quick hello to if, if all those who are city staff, apart from Eric, if you're a city staff of any form, please raise your hand and wave so that we can all see who you are. All right, give them a big hand. If they have issues, if you all have issues, those are the ones that are, are taking the uh, uh, taking the ball and dealing with a lot of their issues and the problems that, that we face as a city and as constituents. The next person I'd like to bring up, and, and I'm going to bring him up first before I do my comments, I'm going to let him leave also before I do my comments. Uh, Eric Walsh has been a, um, an individual at City Hall that I've respected for many years. Uh, while I was on City Council, he didn't run for, he didn't apply for City Manager, but I thought at that point that he would one day be a City Manager. And I was so proud to be able to cast my vote for him uh, a couple weeks ago for to be our new City Manager. Uh, he's, he's back then, he would always take on the, the most complicated issues and come up with solutions. And he, can, he has and continues to do that uh, over the years. And so it's, it's with great pleasure that I'm going to introduce Eric Walsh. Let me tell you one thing before he comes on up. Today is his birthday. So he's working at the evening shift on his birthday, and so he's going to say a few comments. Uh, we may take two questions at most. They better be burning questions, and then we're going to let him. We're going to sing "Happy Birthday" to him, have, him, have him a, a bit of cake, and let him walk out while we continue our meeting. All right. Mayor is a chairperson, and the city council act as a board of directors. 
city manager acts as a CEO, chief executive officer. Um, the manager's responsibilities are to oversee 12,000, over 12,000 employees, uh, to oversee all the administrative processes, to oversee the operations of the organization. And, and we've got a huge organization, over 12,000 employees, over a $2.8 million a year budget. That's the manager's role. Manager's also responsible for helping the council and facilitate those policy level discussions that they, that they decide. Um, the manager's role of the staff is to uh, walk them through potential fiscal impacts or operational impacts of decisions they may make, um, is to provide them alternatives and make a recommendation. But once the mayor and council decide what those policy issues are, it's the manager's responsibility to uh, line up 12,000 employees behind him or her and execute that. Um, that's the form of government we have. It's a council manager form of government. Um, the city manager is not an elected official. The city manager, the city manager, answers to Councilman Hall and his colleagues, and and uh, you know it, it, they point the hill, and uh, 12,000 of us take it. Uh, and I think that's important. Uh, that's I, I found that to be an important piece to. Reiterate as I've had an opportunity to meet with uh, with uh, um, folks at, at these meetings. Um, so I'm I'm excited. The Mayor and Council approved the ordinance last week. Uh, I take uh, over uh, responsibility on March 1st. February is a big transition month for us. Uh, I, uh, I worked for Cheryl for 13 years. Um, she is uh, very results oriented, hard charging, and. Uh, had an opportunity to kind of professionally grow underneath that. Uh, but this month is going to be a big transition for the organization, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with the great team that we have in the city and uh, delivering upon the directions of the mayor and council and hopefully interacting uh, with uh, the community. Although the mayor and council has set up a series of meetings uh, that we're going through uh, this listening tour. This will be the last time you see me. I think it's important. Uh, what I've seen is that it's important to uh, have that face time and understand what the issues are. We have a lot of employees, and in you know, every neighborhood association meeting, you'll see a handful of safe officers or code officers or maybe an animal care services officer. We're, we're ingrained in the neighborhoods, uh, but I think it'll be important for me to make sure that I keep a uh, finger on that pulse. So, looking forward to it.
throughout the throughout the city, not just executives, executives, police officers, firefighters, uh, uh, field staff, um, and, and that's a, that's an annual thing that we do so that it helps lay out for each department. So that every executive knows that this is the profile of the city, or this is the profile of your department, and here are the areas where you need to improve. And, and getting that information to the departments as they do targeted recruitments, as they do uh, outreach or internships, as they do uh, potential promotions inside the departments, that's all good information. You know, one of the one of the things that, and I don't anticipate changing this, but one of the things that uh, is a requirement uh, for the annual evaluations of executives is uh, how well they've kept up with that diversity. That's a good tool and a measuring stick. I think uh, I think our executives are have done a good job at it. But it's you know it's just it's one of those things that you always got to keep your eye on uh, because uh, you can have you can have people retire or leave for other employment and uh, we can change. So that's why we look at that annually, make sure the departments get that information. And I'll keep that uh, the same approach. Representative Gerber Hawk, we're going to let you take the last question. And we'll, we'll, we can ask questions in a little bit later. First of all, Eric, thank you for coming and being here in my district and, and the council's district. One of the things we'd like to know, and I just look at you and I see your heart, and we're interested in leadership that understands the value of investing in human capital. Can we count on you to, we love big buildings, but we want to start investing in the human capital so we can build capacity, we can strengthen our children, help our elderly who are losing their homes. We want an agenda focused around people. Can we count on you for that? Yes, but you know, it's also important that I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that I don't think any of the city uh, uh, elected officials, the mayor and council, would disagree with that. And I think it's a constant balance. At the end of the day, the manager's role is to be supportive and execute their vision. So um, uh, while I'm entitled to my official opinions, um, I'm in a professional role. Um, and, I, and, and of course, there's a balance that needs to be struck on a whole host of issues. And uh, uh, existing neighborhoods and new development, or uh, human capital versus workforce development, or uh, public safety versus quality of life issues, it's all a balance, and, and that's, part of, that's, that's part of the challenging part of this job. Um, but that's also part of the facilitating that conversation with the council um, and making sure that they've got that information. It's you know the balance is always there. It was probably always there when 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 uh, Councilor Hall was on the, the council uh, previously. That's that's that thought process that the council's body comes to as they give that direction. So certainly, I I want to see this community do well. Um, I want to see not just the community do well, the folks that live here do well. Um, and I think we've all got the, the same idea of what we want in the future. All right, so let's give Eric a big hand.
And I think he's right. Uh, Representative Gerber Hawkins said he can have whatever ideas are in his, in, in his head or opinions and perspectives, but at the end of the day, it's a code on the council member uh, to make sure that we have the, uh, those sorts of objectives and ideas in, in mind. So whether it be human capital, whether it be affordable housing, whether it be streets and infrastructure, whether it, make sure that, whether it be make, making sure that we continue business and economic development, that drive's got to come from the council member. And I'm hoping that the candidates that are here uh, and that are elected will carry on that vision and drive and push and advocate because at the end of the day, it does take a champion on council to champion particular issues. And so, uh, candidates that are out there, make sure that you pick one or two issues that you can champion and carry those ideas and policies all the way through. Uh, while I'm here, let me, let me just also mention that one other, other candidate just came in. Keith Tony, if you could raise his hand. So I think I will, I've introduced all the candidates that are here. So, people have asked me, why did I apply? And why am I here? Number one, uh, let me just, just say, I've got, a, I've got a vision for District 2, just like anybody, any individual should, uh, but also any elected official should have. And my vision is no different from anybody else's. I live here just like you all do, and I have business here like you all do, and I want a safe, a productive um, and a, a location to be able to, to raise my family, shop, eat, do business, etc. So those, that vision is no different from anybody else. We want a, an attractive location for not only Mark ourselves, but also those people that we are, uh, are reaching out to business-wise. And so, but beyond that, as a person here that's only here for about four or five months, it's going to be really difficult for me to implement a vision. Uh, when I was in District 8, I had ideas, two or three main things that I wanted to drive and push, and so I, I chose those things early, and I strategized the entire time as to how to make that happen and push that agenda all the way through. I'm not going to be able to do that in, in four or five months. So the reason I'm here is to make sure that whatever strategy was already in place when, when uh, Councilman Shaw left, that we don't discontinue that momentum. And so, too often, District 2 loses momentum, number one, but then number two, uh, we're not able to, to carry out, effectively carry out different policies and, and plans and so forth. When I was appointed, I was the fifth council member in this seat in five years. And so, for me, that's a tragedy for District 2. Because, as, as Representative Gerber, Gerber Hawkins will tell you, uh, you gain a lot simply by being in that seat for a certain amount of time. And so, your first six months or so are learning. And once you get past that learning, then you can really start working and implementing. But if we're constantly in the mode of learning, nothing ever really gets done for District 2. So my main objective was to be able to take my same skill set that I have from District 8, uh, and utilize them in District 2 for whatever issues that are here to make sure that we don't stop business and don't stop the progress that District 2 had already gained at least over the last year and a half. And then the second reason is to make sure that we have a level playing field for all the candidates that are going to be running out there. And so uh, we'll have that complete list as I mentioned on the 15th. Uh, you'll hear from them over, over the next four or five months. Uh, but, but at that point, all of them will have the same opportunity uh, to, to run and to communicate with, with the district as to what their vision is and what their issues are. And so I'm looking forward to being able to, to see the next city council member campaign uh, over the next four or five months. What I've also committed to is to make sure that I utilize my role uh, to mentor and to, and to show the candidates what city council is, for, particularly for those that don't know, and to, and to make sure that they have some exposure before they can get into the seat. And so, uh, my staff is working once, once, once the 15th deadline comes. My staff will look at all the candidates that are there, and we're gonna we're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them and the team for Wednesday and Thursday, so that we can walk through what I look for and what I try to do as a city council member, and some of the issues that I face on a daily basis, uh, committees, time commitments, etc. So that when they hit the, when they come onto office in May or June, they just go on. Alright, so the opportunity for
for me is to make sure that we mentor the next city council member for the district and that they have a leg up um, as opposed to other council members that are coming without maybe that mentorship and that, that, that opportunity. So for me, it's, it's about the district and making sure that we have good, strong representation on day one uh, when that individual comes into office. And so that's kind of basically my vision for my service in, 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 the, uh, in the position for the next four or five months. I do have a bigger vision just generally, but I'm uh, setting that aside to make sure that we, we keep, keep business moving. I'll push one or two issues that I think I can accomplish in the next four or five months. But from there, we're leaving it open to the next district two city council. So those are my comments. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll take two questions if they're burning. Uh, I know we got question cards that are out there, and we're going to take all those cards and we're going to we're going to look through them and respond to those questions individually. I'll be around from from now until eight o'clock, as, uh, as well as my staff. So if there are individual questions, we can take those as well. If there are two big questions, uh, I'll take those at this time if that's all right. Couple announcements, okay? If there are announcements, can those come forward? Liz. Is there any other announcements to bring those forward? So I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the first question. Um, I'm Shannon Lee. Becoming D2 Strong Logo. We have our first and 
but it's still higher than, than the norm. And, and for me, you don't neglect any sort of crime, particularly if it's violent crime. And, uh, and so I'll push uh, the, the police officers as much as we can to address violent crime issues. One thing that worked a few years back is we had, we had a, kind of what they call a, a, a cat teams or focus teams. And so these groups, these would be groups of officers that would go into targeted areas and focus in their resources on those targeted, targeted areas. Uh, this may be an opportunity for us as District 2 to be able to push that sort of solution to survival crime in the district. So uh, as much as I can, as much as my staff can, we'll, we'll, we'll help to push our police officers, our safe officers, uh, to protect us from violent crime. Thank you. I'll take, I'll take one more question. I'm going to ask Representative Gerber and Hawkins to come up and, and say a couple words, and then we'll close out. Yes, sir. So uh, just an overall transparency of the city zone. There's overall transparency of the district. In the district, making sure that there's safeguards that we know what's actually happening in our district. Of course, we're going to get blindsided on a number of occasions. Just as he spoke about, just the streets we got going, we told one thing. So, what safeguards do we have? First of all, and then the next thing, the transparency is related to parks and recreation. They're doing a ton of renovations as it relates to that green belt and whatnot. So, how do we know? How that's going to affect District 2, and we will know what information to see and what we find that information. Right. So, really, you're the, you're the liaison as a council member in the council members' offices, and 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 I'll push this to all the candidates that are out there. We should we should be on top of that number one, and so we should be on top of of of, of the of our whatever we put in the budget, whatever we put in our in the, in the bond funding. And we should be keeping track of those items throughout the year and throughout the five years of implementation for, for a bond project. So that's incumbent upon a city council member to do that. That may not have been happening because we had such turnover uh, over time. So when you have five council members in five years in a position, they lose track of bond funding and projects, they lose track of even budget projects, etc. Um, so that's why it's incumbent on, on you all and us to be able to choose good representatives to so representatives that will stay in office and act with, be active uh, for us during that time period. So we've lost a little bit of that momentum, so part of that is, is city council members pushing the agenda, part of that is us as a community electing good folks to, to be able to serve who will keep that continuity and uh, keep that advocacy. But then the other piece, we, we have some systematic things that we implemented a long time ago, such as citizens advisory boards on bond projects and, and in other areas. And those individuals, and, and, and he's, he's on, the, on the committee, uh, they look at those, they, their, their job is to look at those bond projects and those, and those funds and to make sure that we accomplish and implement what, what it's set out to be. So I think we have systematic uh, opportunities in there. He's advocating to me just like I'll be advocating to the city to, to make sure that we push. So we have a little bit of both the uh, uh, opportunities to be able to push on, on all sides. All right, we're going to close up with Representative Herbert Hawkins and then uh, and I'll be, be around, my staff will be around to answer more questions. about our violent crime that's happening. We've got to make a commitment to work together to make things different, not just the police officers, but we as a community. So when Liz came up and talked about her event on the 23rd in terms of bringing community together, that's your time to come and sit at the table and let's talk about some real solutions related to not only what the elected officials can do and what law enforcement can do, but you as citizens, what you can do also. So we've got it is we've got to have a multi-pronged approach to our corrections here. But we can get it done if we focus. And I want to say this: this will be a marathon, not a sprint. So you've got to be able to stick with it and make it happen. The other thing I wanted to say is that Councilman has reached out to me and I've reached out to him and we're committed to work together so that upon his departure in May, we can look at each other and smile and say mission accomplished. We want to be able to do that together. And I accomplish it to make that happen. And then finally, at the state level, teachers will be getting an increase, y'all. Yeah. Particularly in our schools, 
looking at that as part of the safety measure. So that's going to be important. One of the bills I'm championing this year is a tourniquet bill, which will require schools to have a tourniquet kit in the building. From what I've learned, because I think we all know that the mass shootings is going to be difficult to stop altogether. But what we can do is save lives. And if we've got people trained on how to do tourniquets, that will stop some of the deaths in terms of people bleeding out before they can get the help. As well as these kids have a monitor in them so that as our first responders come, they can go directly where the injured individual is. So that's important. We're going to work on bail reform, reform and criminal justice reform. Those are difficult things to, to talk about. Those are things we need to address. I want to make sure that y'all are aware when these things come to the forefront so you can come up and testify and give your position on these things. And finally, I'd like to say this, community, you do not run for public office unless you love the community you plan to serve. Thank you all for being here. I'll stick around.